Ladies and gentlemen, women's doubles is next on Margaret Court Arena. Please welcome from Romania, Irana Bada and Monica Nicolescu. And their opponents from the USA, Raquel Atawo, and from Slovenia, it is Katarina Srobotnik. And a very good afternoon here at the Australian Open. It's perfect conditions as we see the number nine seeds, Katarina Srobotnik and Raquel Atawo on call. We're into the third round already here on Super Sunday. And it has been one heck of a first week here at the Australian Open. Perfect weather, great conditions, and taking this one inside here on Margaret Court Arena. My name's Josh Eagle, and joining me is Liz Smiley. Liz, I know you're super excited about this women's doubles match. Well, as you said, Josh, it's uh, great conditions. There's the weather, 20 degrees, becoming sunny. We've seen a bit of variation, haven't we, in the weather this week? You know, one of the two of those really hot days, 36, 37. And, but for the most part, it's been terrific. Couple of rain delays, but really nothing that's going to affect the tournament too much, which is all good. Match I'm really looking forward to. We've got the seeded pair of Atwo and Strobotnik taking on the the giant killers, really, in Irina Barra and Monica Nicolescu knocking out the sixth seeds a little earlier in the event. Uh, just a quick word. It's going to be uh, like the normal format with advantage during the game, final set, ten points tie break in case we reach it. Okay. Otherwise, the shot clock is going to be displayed on the side wall plus this screen and on that side wall plus this screen over there so you can watch it. So it's from the moment I call the score until you start the motion. And one minute to be ready for play after the warm-up. And Hawkeye, of course. Any question? No? A and Z or Rod Laver? A and Z. Receive? OK. Have a good match. Did you ever choo choose to receive Never. when you won the toss? No, it's, it's... In a doubles match or a singles match or a mixed or anything? No, it's quite the um, trend, isn't it, these days? I never did it. Yeah, Not that my serve was that good, but I just always felt like it was, particularly in doubles, just giving away the advantage, really. Yeah, I, I do agree. I think on what's happened, you see it, I would say, over 90% of the time in, in singles and even in men's singles as well, women and men's, you see it a lot. But not so much in double, so I, I do agree. I think it's it's an opportunity, isn't it, to to set the tone for the match. And you feel like you're playing catch up the whole set. All right, Arena, Arena Barra from Romania, and Romania really are producing quite a lot of players, and no doubt off the back of having Simona Halep leading the way as world number one. Very strong tennis nation and history. Did you ever get to play in no, Romania? No, I didn't. But when I think of Romania, I think of Ilina Stasi. I think of uh, Virginia Rosic. Yeah. She won the French Open. She did. I want to say about 1977 yeah. or in that era, somewhere. Monica Nicolescu is a really awkward player to play against. As you'll see, she's got the slice forehand, really unique technique, and it's an interesting story. She started off, um, obviously, with conventional style forehand, and, and what appears lost a nerve a little bit on the forehand, and has just gone back to just slicing almost every forehand. So she's got great wheels, good mover, excellent double-hander, and just this awkward slice forehand. So you'll get to see that today. It's uh, rather unique, to say the least. It's a good shot to have on a grass court or an indoor fast court. The ball stays very low. A lot of the girls these days don't like the ball when it's low. They like it coming up nice and high. There's Katarina Shrebotnik. Had a great on the tour yeah. many years. Oh, yeah. Great, great amount of years on tour and had such success, obviously, in the doubles game and mixed doubles. Played a little bit of singles early on in her career, but really in the last 10 or 15 years, primarily is focused solely on doubles and done a good job of it at that. Three minutes. And her partner, Raquel Atawo, who's very athletic. You'll see her cross a lot today at the net. Likes to get involved and use her movement. Got good doubles now. Well, that's what doubles is all about, isn't it? Taking advantage of the good shots that your partner hits. And, 
and invariably working together. A, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's the team that take advantage of his other of, of their partner's good shots that are the ones that normally come out on top. Alexander Rubin from France in charge on what really is a, a beautiful day here Sunday. It's top temperature expected at 24 degrees. So as the day sort of goes on here in Melbourne, the, the temperature tends to to heat up and peak around three or four o'clock in the afternoon. And she how big with the crowds yesterday, Liz? Jam packed in here. Well, the fact of the matter is, you can come to the tennis and not see a tennis ball struck. <laughs> you can go ahead to the. The climbing wall, the, you've got cars out the back here, you've got a, a, yeah. a wet and wild show for the kids. A concert at night for the adults. It's, it's Great phenomenal. food. Yeah. Rockpool and Nobu are both on site. Yeah, it's really it's turned into yeah. an event. It's yeah, not it's, just a no. it's not just a Grand Slam tennis event, is it? No, it's first couple of weeks here in Melbourne. It's just an absolute festival of fun for everybody. Everyone's on school holidays. Ladies and gentlemen, well, I think the fact that uh, Austra the Austra the Austra the Tennis Australia or the Australian Open had in conjunction with the help of the Victorian government, I've got so much space to be able to expand and get it to this stage. That's a luxury and an advantage they have over the other Grand Slams. Mm. Plus, they're also building an, another stadium court between RLA and Melbourne Arena, a 5,000 seat court, sunken court, so some of those courts will be relocated to other parts of the uh, venue, One but minutes. obviously you can't do that unless you've got plenty of space. Yeah. You look at the Grand Slams, um, Wimbledon have now, they're going to expand across the road and Church Road with the golf course that's over there, so they're the only Grand Slam that doesn't have qualifying on site, so they're trying to rectify that. Uh, the US Open, they've got limited space there, haven't they? Yeah. Paris? Well, Paris is, uh, it's it's probably, yeah, it's, it's the smallest, isn't it, just geographically in terms of where it's located because it's right in the heart of a quite a dense seconds. suburb and just, just doesn't have the space. And the, the expectation and the demand for the corporate entertaining is, and that's where the, you know, the sponsorship and the money comes in, of course. So Those people have to be looked after, and rightly so. Yeah. Just going through the last few serves of the warm up. And I like the introduction of the shot clock. That is. End of warm up. And you'll hear the umpire say end of warm up. So they now, in fact, have just one minute to be ready. So it just stops a lot of the. Uh, the the, the delay. Yeah, the drawn out <laughs> warm ups that just seem to just get longer and longer before the players ended, ended up serving the first point so i think it's been a it's a good introduction and also just between points of 25 seconds and especially in the doubles you see it where they they communicate and they tell them where each their partner where they're serving and where they're going and it just gets a bit drawn out a bit tedious katarina shabotnik she's going to keep serving not interested in sitting down and having a drink she'll be ready to go A lot at stake in the women's doubles and men's doubles, mixed doubles events. There's such big prize money at the slams these days. Make a great living out of it. If you're at the top of the tree. 